Hello everyone, welcome to the second biology GCSE lesson. Okay, so like I said, this is the second GCSE biology lesson and we are um, continuing to work through the biology key concepts topic. It's a really important topic because it contains um, lots of um, key biology ideas that are then used through other biology topics. So it's a great one to revise. The learning question today is how do enzymes work? The do it now for this is um, a little bit of revision from the first biology lesson, which is also on um, the Science and Leonard's Academy YouTube channel and is also set on class charts. What you will need for this lesson is a pen and a piece of paper or a notepad. So if you don't have those, then just pause the video now and go and grab them. Okay. If you would like to just catch up on the first lesson, which was all about um, cells, so plant and animal cells um, that we call eukaryotic cells, and then bacteria cells, which are prokaryotic cells. If you'd like to catch up on that, then feel free to go back and watch that one. Um, or you can look it up on BBC Bite Size because the information's there as well. Okay, so like I said, the do it now is a little bit of revision from last lesson. So describe the structure of a prokaryotic cell. Now this is worth four marks, so you need to make four separate points. So hopefully you can all remember. So if you pause the video now and have a go at that question. Fantastic, okay. So tick your answer. Um, so tick each mark that you get to give yourself a score out of four. So they don't have a nucleus. So this is why they're prokaryotic cells, remember. Karyotic or karyote means nucleus and pro means before. So these are the really, really, I mean, evolutionary wise, these are the really old cells that evolved first and didn't have a nucleus. So they don't have a nucleus. Instead, their DNA is in the cytoplasm. And it's either plasmid DNA, which is just kind of um, the, the circle, sorry, of DNA. So plasmid DNA is those circles, or circular DNA. And chromosomal DNA is the DNA that's just wiggly um, inside the cytoplasm. It has cytoplasm. That's where the chemical reactions occur, the cellular reactions. Um, it has a membrane that controls the movement of molecules into and out of the cell, so cell membrane. Um, it has flagella, which is like a little tail that helps bacterial cells to move because remember they don't have any muscles or anything because they're just one, one cell, just unicellular, um, so they need that flagella to help them move around. And they have a cell wall that provides protection. Okay, so moving on then to look at enzymes, because this lesson is, the, the learning question is how do enzymes work? So enzymes are proteins um, and they function as a biological catalyst. So a catalyst is just something that speeds up, a chemical that speeds up a chemical reaction without being changed in the reaction. So it's not changed, it's not used up, but it speeds up a reaction. And we have got lots and lots of enzymes um, inside our body and they, they help to speed up lots of chemical reactions. They also help to digest um, different molecules of food for us. And you can see here that um, the enzyme has this shape called an active site. So this is a space inside it called the active site. Now that active site is specific to the substrate, so that's the, the thing that's going to carry out the reaction. Yeah, that's the thing that's, that's being broken down or reacted. So that substrate fits into the active site like a puzzle piece. So the active site is exactly the right shape for this substrate to fit inside it. Okay, and when they fit together, the enzyme and the substrate, they form what's called an enzyme substrate complex. 
Now what I would like you to do please is just pause the video now and draw yourself a diagram of an enzyme and a substrate forming an enzyme substrate complex. So you don't have to have the active site the same shape as the one um, that I have on the screen. You can have it a different shape as long as it's what we call a complementary shape. So as long as it's the right shape for the substrate to fit inside it. Excellent, well done. So, um, here is an enzyme that has an active site, so it would be ready for a substrate to come and fit inside it. What happens, though, is sometimes if an enzyme is exposed to an extreme pH, so say an extreme um, acid or alkali, or if it's exposed to a high temperature, the shape of that active site will change. And if the shape of that active site changes, then remember the substrate can no longer fit into the active site. So the chemical reaction can't happen anymore. So if this happens, the substrate will no longer fit into the active site, as I've said. And we say that the enzyme has been denatured. Now, when we're writing question, when we're writing out the answers to questions, it's very tempting sometimes to put that the enzyme has died. Um, but the correct term is denatured. So denatured means that the enzyme has changed shape, it's unraveled, so the active site has changed shape and the substrate can no longer fit into it anymore and so the reaction can't happen. So the first practice question here for you, so it's worth two marks, so you need to make two points. Um, explain the role of the active site of an enzyme. Okay, so if you pause the video now and try and write out your two mark answer. Okay, so there's lots of possible points that you could get for this. So the active site of an enzyme has a specific shape. We can also call that a complementary shape. Remember, complementary means it's kind of like the opposite shape so that the substrate can fit inside it. So the active site of the enzyme has a specific shape so that it can bind to a substrate or form an enzyme substrate complex. So that means a reaction can take place. You could mention about the active site joining substances or molecules together or breaking them apart. And the lock and key mechanism is a, a kind of name for the um, illustration of an enzyme. So you might have heard of the lock and key method before. So the active site kind of acts like the lock and the substrate is the key that fits inside it. Okay, so we also need to know about factors that affect enzyme controlled reactions. So like I said, the reactions inside our body and inside all living things um, are controlled by enzymes, by these biological catalysts that are meant to facilitate and speed up the reaction without getting used up or changed. So the first factor that we are going to look at is temperature. So you can see here, at very low temperatures, enzymes don't work very well. Now the reason for that is because at low temperatures, all of the molecules, so the enzyme molecules and the substrate molecules, are moving around quite slowly. Because they're moving around slowly, it's not very likely that um, an enzyme and a substrate will, will collide and bind together. So less enzyme substrate complexes will be formed at these low temperatures. So that's why the, the reaction here will happen quite slowly. As you increase the temperature, the reaction will happen more and more quickly. That's because as the enzyme and the substrates move around more quickly, you're more likely to have them collide and bind together. So you're more likely to have enzyme substrate complexes forming. So as temperature increases, uh, so does the rate of reaction, so does that enzyme action increase. Until we get up here, now this is where the reaction happens at the greatest rate, so the enzyme is working at the, the highest rate that it can. We call this the optimum temperature. 
All right, so this is the optimum temperature up here, the temperature that the enzyme works best at. After that, what do you think might happen to the enzyme here to cause the reaction rate to drop at such a, a great rate? Yeah, so the um, enzyme will, um, temperature will cause it to unravel, it will change shape, the shape of that active site will change, so the enzyme will become denatured. When the enzyme becomes denatured, that, that's a permanent change then. It can't go back to how it was before. So the enzyme is denatured. It doesn't, doesn't um, work to speed up the reaction anymore. And so when the enzymes start to denature at this high temperature here, enzyme action decreases rapidly until eventually all the enzymes will have denatured and um, the enzymes won't be working at all and there won't be any reaction happening. Okay, so that's what's happened down here. Okay, what it would be worth doing is just quickly sketching out that graph. Okay, so if you pause this video, sketch out that graph and try and label it, explaining what's happening um, to, the, to the enzyme at those different points. Okay, so feel free to rewind and listen again to what I was saying about the enzyme action and try and sketch out the graph and label what's happening at those different points. Well done, so the next factor that affects enzyme activity is pH. So pH means how acidic or alkali the conditions are around the enzyme and around the substrate. So you can see here that um, at very acidic conditions, like a pH of two and three here, the enzyme really doesn't work very well. Um, that's because at these extreme acidic conditions, the enzymes will denature. So that extreme pH, that, that extreme acid um, pH will denature the enzymes. So they won't be able to form enzyme substrate complexes. So therefore the reaction won't happen. The, the rate of enzyme activity will be very low. Okay, as the pH um, increases here, it gets towards what we call the optimum pH. So optimum pH is the pH at which the enzyme works best. So it has the highest rate of enzyme activity up here. So the reaction will be happening fastest. Now, interestingly, different enzymes have got different optimum pHs. So some enzymes work best actually at very low pHs. So enzymes in the stomach, like the enzyme um, that digests uh, proteins in the stomach, that enzyme will work at very low pHs because as you know, there's lots of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So the pH of the stomach is kind of around the three mark here. So if we were looking at enzymes in the stomach, they would have a slightly different graph where they would be optimum at that pH. Okay, but this enzyme here that we're looking at has an optimum pH of eight. So very slightly alkali that is, because remember neutral is seven. So this enzyme has an optimum pH of eight. After that, when um, conditions become more alkali, that alkalinity will denature the enzyme. So again, in those um, alkali conditions, the shape of the enzyme will change, the enzyme will kind of start to unravel, the shape of the active site will change so that the substrate no longer fits into the active site. So that's why the rate of enzyme activity is, is very low here. Okay, so again, if you can pause the video and sketch out that graph, and if you're feeling really confident, possibly try and label it with what's happening and why. Well done. Okay, the last um, factor that we're going to look at, the last factor that affects um, the rate of enzyme activity is concentration. Okay, so this here is a graph of substrate concentration. So that's the number of those substrate molecules that are in a given area. Um, so when substrate concentration is very low, the rate of enzyme activity is also very low. That's because there just aren't enough of these substrate molecules moving around to be able to form enzyme substrate complexes, okay? 
So that's why the rate of the enzyme activity is very low there. As you increase the concentration of the substrate, so, so you add more and more of these, there will be many, many more around. And so they'll be more likely to bind with the enzyme. Okay, so more likely to form enzyme substrate complexes. So the reaction will happen at a greater rate. So as we increase the substrate concentration, the rate of enzyme activity is also increasing. And then what happens here is it stays the same or it plateaus. Okay, so plateau is a really good word to use to describe what's happening here in this part of the graph, where it's just a straight line. That's because the number of substrate molecules have increased, but the number of enzymes have stayed the same. So you've kind of saturated all the enzymes, you've filled up all of those enzymes, those active sites will be um, filled up. So the reaction, if you increase substrate concentration anymore, the reaction can't happen any faster because there, there just isn't any free enzyme active sites to fit into, okay? So here we go, substrate concentration increases up until a certain point, up until a maximum, and then it plateaus, it stays the same, okay? So again, if you could, pause the video there, sketch out this graph of rates of enzyme activity against substrate concentration and then if you're feeling really confident you can label it and try and explain why, why the rate of enzyme activity is changing at different points. Okay, so we're going to move on and we are going to look at um, describing graphs. So this is a really important skill in science because it's in every single paper and it's a skill that you can use in biology, chemistry and physics. Okay, you often in, in each of those um, have to describe what's happening in a graph. So when you are asked to describe a graph, you're just expected to write about its overall shape. And that's quite easy because once you've practiced how to do the skill of describing a graph, you can do it for any graph question and it's easy marks. You don't even really need any, any scientific knowledge. So you can say whether it's linear, so increasing in a straight line, whether it's curved, you can say um, what's happening to the slope of the gradient. So it might be kind of um, a slow increase at first and then increasing at a greater rate later on. Um, We'll go through an example and have a look. Okay, and that's different from when you're asked to explain a pattern in a graph. When you're asked to explain why something's happening in a graph, that's when you need your scientific knowledge to come in and explain why the graph is, why the graph has the pattern that it does. Okay, so like I promised, we're going to look at some examples now. So here is a graph of the rate of lipase. So lipase is an enzyme. It's an enzyme that breaks down fats or lipids in the body. So you've got the rate of lipase activity here and you've got temperature changing across here. So this question says, describe the effect of temperature on the activity of lipase. Now remember, in a describe question, you just have to describe what's happening in the graph. So imagine you're on the phone to somebody and they're asking you what's happening in that graph of, of rate of uh, lipase activity against temperature, how it changes um, as the temperature increases. You are just explaining the pattern to them as if they can't see it, okay? So if you can pause the video now and have a go at describing the effect of temperature on the activity of lipase. Well done. So what you can say is as the temperature increases from 20 degrees C to 37 degrees C, the rate of lipase activity also increases. And you can put the units in there as well if you want to. So you can say from 0.2 to 0.8. Okay, so that would get you one mark saying from uh, 20 degrees to 37 degrees, enzyme, the lipase activity is increasing. The next thing you can say is the rate of lipase activity is optimal or the highest at 37 degrees up here. Then you can say above 37 degrees, the rate of lipase activity decreases 
from 0.8 to 0.1 or decreases rapidly you could say as well if you wanted to okay so remember it's just describing what's happening in the graph The next question says, explain why the activity of lipase changes above a temperature of 40 degrees. So looking here, first of all, at what is happening above 40 degrees. Yeah, it's decreasing pretty rapidly. So can you explain why? So this is where you need to use some science, those ideas about enzymes, active sites, enzyme substrate complexes. That's where you need these scientific ideas when there's an explain question. So if you can pause the video now, explain why the activity of lipase changes above a temperature of 40 degrees. Well done. So an increase in temperature above 40 um, changes the shape of the active site of the enzyme. Okay, that would get you one mark. So therefore the enzyme becomes denatured or no longer functions, or I'd give you a mark if you said, therefore the substrate can no longer fit into the active site, or if you said, um, can no longer form enzyme substrate complexes. Okay, any of those things would get you a mark. Well done, so give yourself a mark out of two for that. And what's really useful is to um, correct answers. If you, get, if you get them wrong, don't panic, but correct them because it really helps with the, the learning of these concepts. Okay, the last question is a six mark question, um, which is explain how named factors, so that means you have to name the factors, but I've written out the factors here just in case you can't remember them. Explain how named factors affect the rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions. And this question you can you can answer on a piece of paper if you want to, but what would be really brilliant is if you can answer it on Shobi, so www.shobi.com. The assignment is there and the class code for biology for year 9 and 10 is here, so 9LCB9. So all in capitals. So if you join that class, then this question is assigned on there. And what you can do is write out your answer there and myself or, or one of the other science teachers will be able to mark it for you. All right, so explain how named factors affect the rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions. Now, if you feel like you, can, you are confident enough to go away and have a go at that, then just pause the video or go to show B and um, answer it there. If you need a little bit more help, then I'll, I'm gonna talk you through it slightly now. So if you can do that independently, then go off and do that now. You can stop the video, um, answer that now, or go to show B and write up your answer there. If you need a little bit more help, a little bit more kind of support with it, then just hang on now. So, I would, if I was answering this question, I would try and plan my answer. Now, I could do that by doing a sort of mind map. So, I've written out my three factors that I know affect the rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions. Okay, so we've got temperature, pH, and concentration. Now, I can write a few notes about each of these. So, I know that when the temperature is too low, there'll be a slow rate of reaction. I know that there's an optimum temperature, and I know that when the temperature's too high, the reaction just stops completely. I know those because I remember the shape of those graphs, yeah? If you don't remember the shape of those graphs, go back and have a look at those now. So for pH, I remember from my graph that enzymes have an optimum pH, so enzymes work at the fastest rate at their optimum pH. And I remember on that, the shape of that graph that if the conditions are too acidic or too alkali, then the reaction stops. Okay, so these are all things I remember just from looking at those graphs. Concentration, I remember that higher concentrations, it means faster reactions. Yeah, I remember that 
that curve, that increase in the graph. But I also remember that it reaches a maximum point and after that, the reaction doesn't increase at all. Okay, so now I've got to the point where I've really described what's what's happening, how I've described how those factors affect enzyme uh, catalyzed reactions. Okay, now what I need to do is explain that a little bit more. And in order to explain it, I need to use scientific concepts. So I need to start talking about things like active site or enzyme substrate complexes. Okay, so thinking about temperature, I know that when the temperature is too low, the rate is slow and that's where I start putting in my science so there's not enough energy to make those collisions or the reactions occur. I know that when the temperature is too high the reaction stops and my bit of science I'm going to put in there is that's because the shape of the active site has been changed so the enzyme is denatured. Okay, when I'm talking about pH, I know that in two acidic or two alkali conditions, the reaction stops. My bit of science I'm going to put in to explain that is because the shape of the active site will change or the enzyme is denatured. Okay, and for concentration, I've got my facts there. So I know higher concentration means faster reaction. That's because of more collisions, isn't it? Remember when we had more substrate molecules, there's more collisions, so more enzyme substrate complexes formed. And that happens until it reaches, until it plateaus, doesn't it? So it reaches that maximum um, level of enzyme activity at a certain concentration. And that's because all the enzymes have been used up. They've all been filled up. Yeah, so this is my planning of how I would answer this six mark question. All right, so what I'd like you to do is you can take my planning and go away and write out your own six mark question, six mark answer. Um, and if you'd like to go to Shobi, so www.shobi.com, the class code for biology is there. And the assignment, so this question, is um, assigned to you in Shobi. Okay, so that's the end of lesson two of biology. Well done for sticking with it. Um, and we will do another lesson next week. Well done, guys. Hope you're all well and happy.